Let us say you have a cannon and you project a cannonball up with the velocity v0. So you know exactly what's going to happen. And let's first show the ball projecting out of the cannon. So here's the ball coming out of the cannon with the velocity v0. And it goes up, up. And as it moves up, its velocity keeps reducing under the force of gravity. And it reaches its maximum height after, let's say, time t. And here is your maximum elevation and then it starts moving down and the velocity now starts increasing because of gravity again and it ends up hitting the ground. It moves back and then it hits back with the same velocity as it had started. That is V0. But the only difference is that the direction of the velocity would now be reversed. Now, let us say the same cannon projects the ball, but now the cannon is at an angle theta with the ground. So let's see how the situation would look like. But before we go ahead, I would like to mention that we've assumed that there is no air, there is no wind, and as such, the motion of the ball is not getting affected by the air or the wind. And so in the first case, in case of perfect vertical motion, the ball went right up and came down. So there was no vertical displacement and there was no horizontal displacement. But now what happens is velocity v0 imparts a horizontal velocity to the ball and also vertical velocity to the ball. If you resolve v0, you'll get a horizontal component and you'll get a vertical component. So the vertical component makes the ball go up while the horizontal component makes the ball go to the right. Now let's Treat both the moments, vertical and horizontal, separately. So let's first see what happens to the ball in its vertical path. So the vertical component of this projection would be V0 sine theta. And you would observe that the ball is constantly under the force of gravity. As the ball is moving up, force of gravity is acting on the ball. And because of this force of gravity, this vertical component will keep reducing its its magnitude will keep reducing till it becomes zero and that will happen when it attains its maximum height so the the vectors would reduce something like this so you see the magnitude of the vertical component of velocity is constantly reducing till it becomes zero at its maximum height and in fact uh, the ball will follow the rules of motion applicable to any motion uh, that happens in vertical direction under the force of gravity. And therefore, all equations of motion that we derived from motion in vertical direction would be applicable. So let's say the velocity will reduce in accordance with the following equations. So the vertical velocity would change like this. Final velocity v at any time would equal to initial velocity v, let's say vi, minus gt, where t is the time of the flight after the projection happens. And you can see v initial is nothing but v naught sine theta. So we can say velocity at any point of time in the vertical path would be v naught sine theta minus gt. And because of this gt component, the velocity will keep producing till it becomes zero. And we can also say that its displacement vector or the vertical height it is taking would increase like this. Y is equal to initial velocity into time minus half gt square. Now here V initial is nothing but as you've already found it is V naught sine theta. So we can write this as V naught sine theta t minus half g t squared. So let's label this as equation number one and let's label this as equation number two. So you see these equations one and two can describe the motion of the particle in vertical direction. One gives the velocity of the particle in vertical direction. That's equation one. And equation two gives the displacement of the particle in vertical direction. And we can also say that the velocity of the particle at any point can be described by this equation as well, which is final velocity square is equal to initial velocity square minus 2gs. 
and here we know the initial velocity is v naught sine theta. So we'll square this minus 2g into displacement in the vertical direction. And, and we're kind of assuming that the cannon is at point zero zero. The reference point is zero zero. So let's call this equation number three. So you're seeing that the, the equations we've just derived are pretty much the same as the equations we had for motion in uh, vertical direction. So it doesn't really matter that the angle theta was 90 degrees or angle theta is 60 degrees or 45 degrees or whatever angle. The laws of motion in vertical direction, what we studied in earlier chapters, apply very well to projectile motion also, uh, where the angle is not necessarily 90 degrees, but a different angle. So having said this, now let us see uh, what happens to the cannonball as it descends down. Now we'll see that again, you know, the, the, the laws of motion will uh, be pretty much the same. The velocity vector will start reversing. Now you see at this point the velocity is zero, after which the velocity keeps increasing because the gravity is now acting on it to increase the magnitude. So the velocity vectors would now look like this on the graph. So the velocity will keep increasing uh, till it kind of hits the ground. So we can say that this would be again v naught sine theta, but but you would see that the direction of the velocity has reversed relative to what it was when it was projected. So this was vertical motion and, and let's specify that these are the equations pertaining to the vertical motion of the cannonball. Now let's find what will happen to the horizontal component of velocity. Now the horizontal component of the velocity you can see is v naught cos theta. And you would also see that while gravity was acting on the cannonball in the vertical direction, there's no force acting on the ball in the horizontal direction because you're assuming that there's no wind, there's no air. And this essentially means, therefore, there is no acceleration of the body in the horizontal direction. And we know that if there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction, the velocity should remain constant. There's no reason for the velocity to change. So we can say that the horizontal velocity at any point continues to be v naught cos theta. So we can label this as again v naught cos theta. Again, we can label this as v naught cos theta. We can label this as v naught cos theta. And at this point, the velocity at the maximum height is v naught cos theta only because there's no vertical component. Likewise, when it is descending, the horizontal component continues to remain v naught cos theta and when it hits the ground again the component is v naught cos theta only and let's make it look like a vector v naught cos theta v naught cos theta v naught cos theta and so on and so forth and you would observe that if you combine if you combine v naught cos theta over here and v naught sine theta over here, resultant velocity would be v naught. And we can show it like this. And you would see that the resultant velocity is v naught. If you combine v naught cos theta and v naught sine theta, you will get resultant as v naught. And this is at the same angle theta, but in the downward direction. So we can say that this is angle theta. So the only equation we have for horizontal motion is that displacement in the horizontal direction, let's call it x is equal to velocity times time. And we know that velocity here is v naught cos theta. So we can write v naught cos theta into time is the displacement. And let's label this as horizontal equation for horizontal moment and let's call this equation number four so with equation one two three and four and if you have an understanding of uh, what we've just spoken in the video projectile motion becomes very easy so you see in projectile motion the vertical and horizontal motions are independent of each other 
In, in other words, you can say that neither motion affects each other. So when you solve problems in projectile motion, it would be a good idea to deal with the motion in vertical and horizontal movements separately. So uh, as a further illustration of the fact that horizontal motion and vertical motion are independent, let's uh, take two examples. And in the first one, let us say we have a golf ball. We have in fact two golf balls, one of which is dropped from a building and the other one is given a horizontal velocity projection. And let's see what happens to these two balls. So let us say this is our, and we have one ball which is just dropped from the top of the building. So its trajectory would be something like this. It's just dropped, so it comes down, 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 and then it hits the ground. Let's say this is the ground. But in the second case, the ball is given, let's say, a horizontal component, a horizontal component velocity, let's say V0 over here. So how would the ball fall? Uh, you can almost imagine the ball would probably take a trajectory like this. It'll come here, 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 and then eventually it would hit the ground. But what, what you would find is that if there's no wind or air resistance, both the balls will hit the ground in equal time. And let's call that time t. Now, if the same height h, let's say this is height h of the building, the same height h is covered by both the balls in time t, it goes to show that horizontal component which we imparted to the ball had no effect on its vertical component. That is despite giving it a velocity of v0, the time taken to reach the ground was t which was the same as of the ball dropped from the building. Now, let, let's further understand this, or rather validate this by another example. And here what we'll do is, let's say there's a monkey hanging off a tree and a bullet is fired from the ground at the monkey. And let's say the situation looks something like this. So let us say uh, under zero gravity condition, a bullet fired off a gun would have taken time t to hit the monkey. It would have gone straight and hit the monkey. But uh, uh, we know that gravity is actually acting on the bullet itself and the bullet is not going straight but taking a projectile path that it is curving down. So now let us assume that when the monkey heard the bullet go, he let off the branch of the tree to save himself. Now what, what you will see in some time is that Despite this, the monkey is hit by the bullet and that's primarily because the bullet and the monkey both were under the force of gravity. So in time t, the bullet went down as much as the monkey went down. So if the monkey went down by height h or distance h, so did the bullet go down by the same distance because the trajectory of the bullet was not straight, but it was something like this. And that's the reason the bullet ends up hitting the monkey. I'll repeat, because the in time t, the monkey dropped by the same height as the bullet curved down because of the projectile nature, which was important, imparted by the force of gravity. So again, it goes to show that irrespective of the horizontal component of the bullet, the, the vertical component follows the same laws of motion as uh, a body in perfect vertical motion or so the monkey went down by a certain uh, distance, which was a perfect vertical motion by the way, and the bullet went down by the same distance as the monkey. In fact, if you observe the equation y is equal to v naught sine theta minus half gt square, so let's write it here again, you would observe that the distance covered by the bullet would have been v naught sine theta t if g was zero, because this component here would have become zero. But because of g, there's a reduction in the uh, height which the bullet can attain. And that that's equal to this half gt square. So you can say that half gt square is actually contributing to the reduction in the 
vertical displacement or in other words you can say that this height is nothing but half gt square or for that matter you take any point in the path of the projectile you would see that the difference this difference or this difference or this difference is nothing but half g t square and t is the time taken by the projectile to reach that point.